transcribed. Ladies and gentlemen. And here comes our star studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the charming starring Gordon McRae and his guest, Miss Dorothy Warren Show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads. The same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now here is our star, Gordon McRae. <laughs> Marvin Miller, and a good, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. In tonight's story, I play a dashing man about town, Baron Roger Belmont. And our lovely guest, Miss Dorothy Warnshold, is Kitty, the girl who gets kissed in the dark in the operetta Orange Blossom. <laughs> I was concerned there was only one woman alive in the whole world, and that was Helen. In fact, the world was Helen, and Helen was the world. And if I was ever to find happiness, it could only be with her. I had thought I'd been in love before, but I realized that spring I had never felt about anyone the way I felt about Helen. It's true that I'm susceptible to ladies. It's true that I've a weakness for their charm. I have always found it simple to succumb to just a dimple for an ankle or a lovely pair of arms. But now my mad philandering is over. Those maids of just one charm have left my mind. For my new love's a complete thing. I have found the only sweet thing Who has all the other charmers' charm combined Though I've always played about I can say without a doubt This time it's love For the thumping of my heart Seems to whisper from the start This time it's love has made this weary world a fairyland, and the skies are blue above. I have felt this way before in my small affairs of yore, but this time is mine. to marry Helen, but there were certain problems in the way. And so, I went to see my attorney. Helen de Vassi. De Vassi, is it you that name? Yes. She had the property adjoining my aunt on the Riviera. And Mary and I both met Helen at the same time. I loved her immediately, and Aunt Mary loathed her immediately. So there was quite a row about it. And Aunt Mary said if I ever saw Helen again, she'd, well, she'd disinherit me. But you saw her anyhow. 
No, as a matter of fact, Helen left the Riviera a few days later. I would have followed her, but Aunt Mary became ill, and naturally, as her prospective heir, our place was by her side. Naturally. By the time Aunt Mary died, I, I'd forgotten. You had forgotten the gambit of No, 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 no. I'd forgotten her address. Anyhow, I never saw her again until I met her by chance last week. Bois Boulogne, stepping out of a Rolls Royce. Now? Sir? Now we're engaged to be married. Isn't that rather sudden? Mm, you wouldn't think so. If you'd ever seen Helen in a tight dress, stepping out of a Rolls Royce. <laughs> oh, I see. Now, sir, my aunt left me $17 million. Some I have the greatest respect for. I don't blame you. But in her will, in her will, which I have right here, she says that I can only inherit the money if, now get this, if I marry within the year, and if I do not marry any woman who is the divorced wife of a Brazilian subject. Helen's former husband was a uh, Brazilian? Yes. What can I do? I don't want to lose Helen, and I don't want to lose the money. <laughs> oh, wait. Then marry someone else. <laughs> a temporary, a marriage of convenience. At the end of the year, you can get a divorce and marry Helen. But where will I find a woman I can trust in a situation like this? I know just the lady. All right. I'm in your hands. <laughs> say that I care very much for the idea. Now, Kitty, I have to have someone I can trust, and after all, you are my godchild. Well, that isn't necessarily a guarantee that you can trust me. Well, you can use the money. Yes. You'll get a large settlement at the time of the divorce. Yes, I suppose there's no doubt about that. I need the money. <laughs> well, then, what's the matter? Oh, nothing, really. It's just that, like every other girl in the world, I've had my own dreams of spring and love and orange blossoms. Thank you. 
are the papers, if you'd like to look them over, Kitty. Oh, I don't have to read them. If you say they're all right, I'll sign them. There's a clause stating that if anything develops of a uh, personal nature between you and the gentleman, you forfeit the settlement. If the uncle insists on it, oh, she's quite a jealous woman. <laughs> I don't think she need worry about anything of a personal nature developing under circumstances like these. Yes. That's fine. Come in. I'm sorry I'm late. My car stalled in the traffic. What? You met. I, I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Well, oh, I'm sorry. For a moment. Uh, this is the young lady. I said you may have it in Baron Roger Belmont. And Roger, this is my godchild, Miss Winter. Uh, if you wouldn't mind waiting in the next room. Do you know this completing the arrangement? Of course. Pleasure to meet you, Miss Winter. So, that's the man. What's the matter with you? Well, of course he wouldn't remember. Why shouldn't he? I was hardly more than a schoolgirl. I remember now. We were both such kids. Well, I, I'd almost forgotten. That's all right, Roger. That was love in all its power. Yet today it seems like a sweet but free.
second act of Orange Blossom, starring Gordon McRae and his guest, Dorothy Warren Show. Oh, Kitty and I were married. I rented a house for her, and she lived there alone. I hardly ever saw her. Since Helen was my fiance, she naturally resented any display of affection on my part towards my wife. However, I did go out to see Kitty with my attorney on the day before she was to file for divorce. I wasn't nearly as happy about the whole thing as I, I thought I would be. And I left the room so Kitty could talk to the lawyer alone. I went out on the veranda. I didn't mean to eavesdrop, and yet I, I couldn't make myself. <laughs> well, Kitty, are you happy? Why should I be happy? The year is up. Now you can get your divorce, collect the settlement, and live the way you want to live. The way I want to live? Oh, if I could live the way I really want to live, oh, I'd live here with Roger. <laughs> that way. I had no idea. But I'm no good for you. I'm a philanderer. I'm a heel. I'm a bum. I know it. You're no good at all. Well, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. As a matter of fact, I don't like you at all. I just want to stay married to you. Oh, now, Kitty, you'll be a free woman tomorrow. You'll meet lots of attractive men. But none of them will be as attractive as you are. You're right about that. It doesn't matter to you how I feel, does it? All that matters is how Helen feels. No, that isn't all that matters. You've got to find someone and be happy too, Kitty. Any man would fall for you. Tell them all to run along and play. You are sweet as morning dew. I won't listen to a word you say. Kitty, darling, do yourself be fair. Find one for whom you care. Men are asked for anything in turn. Don't you like the way men play? I ask them not for pity. I wish it so. Today, Roger, I don't think she realizes or uh, means what she's saying. Now, Kitty, everything is going to be all right for you. I'm sure of it. And living here all alone all this time has probably made her over sentimental. 
I'm sure tomorrow she'll feel a great deal different. Are you? Oh, I'm positive. Uh, tell her that, Roger. You can make her understand. These days are trying, but they can never last. Worry will soon be buried in the past. So, though we know it is hard for us to bear, bravely we'll face this nighttime of despair. Then comes the dawning of morning so splendid, that fair tomorrow when sorrow of your agreement, you know. It is stated in the contract most clearly. Nothing of a personal nature is to develop between you two. All right, I forfeited the settlement. You can keep your money. I wouldn't touch it anyway. Well, Kitty. I never want to see you again. Is that clear, Roger? Well, I hope you both be very happy. Kitty. Let her go. You know you hate women who make scenes, Roger. Thank goodness tomorrow she'll be out of your life forever. Helen? Yes, sir. Goodbye. <laughs> what did you say? I said goodbye. <laughs> going away at all, darling. Oh, Roger, I can't believe it. Well, I'll prove it to you, Mrs. Roger Belmont. Ladies and gentlemen, Dorothy Warren Show will be back in just a minute. And our thanks to Howard McNair, Virginia Christine, and to our entire company. Orange Blossoms with music by Victor Herbert and book and lyrics by Fred de Graysock and B.G. De Silva was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Dean Holloway. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroad. The constant blend of train whistles and factory whistles heard all over our land is a vital part of the industrial activity keeping our plants and our railroads at work around the clock. Day and night, our railroads carry raw materials to our factories and haul away the finished product. And as more and more things are being made for national defense and civilian use, railroads are stepping up their service to meet this increased demand. For only through the dependable and efficient service of the railroads can our industries manufacture and distribute the things America needs for the welfare and security 
of its people. Now, dear friends, here again is lovely Dorothy Warren Show. Thank you, Gordon. I always enjoy being aboard the show train, even though it did look for a while tonight as though uh, another girl were going to get you. Well, there's not a chance when you're around, Dorothy. <laughs> I understand the trip next week is a little different. One of our trips to Fairyland? You're right. We're doing Walt Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Dorothy. And our guest will be Eileen Woods, the girl who played Cinderella in that recent Walt Disney hit. Wonderful. I'll be listening. Good night, Gordon. Good night, and thanks again. Dorothy Warren told. All aboard! Well, sir, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next week, goodbye. (laughs) 